Hey guys, years ago I knew I wanted to start a podcast, but I knew nothing about how to get started. Add to that, I am horrible when it comes to technology. Thankfully, Spotify had a platform where I could do everything I needed, super easy, and best of all, super free. You see, Spotify for Podcasters lets me record, edit, distribute right from my phone or computer so I can get everything done in one place. I can also do video episodes as well, which as a trader helps massively if I wanna talk about something on the charts. Lastly, if you're into making money, which you know some of us are, Spotify for Podcasters makes it super easy to monetize in various ways, including ads like this or subscriptions. So for someone who values my time massively and is always focused on efficiency and productivity, Spotify for Podcasters was the perfect fit for me. Give it a try. Oh, and did I mention? It's free. Hey guys, welcome back to the Trading Coach Podcast. Today we're talking about taxes and this is an episode that I was never gonna do and I really debated, still debating right now, whether I should do it or not. But I always say that the Trading Coach Podcast is for you guys, by you guys, meaning I take the comments and the questions that you guys give me and I give it back to you guys with answers and opinions and stuff like that. That way we can help the community as a whole. And I did get a question on my Spotify community in the uh, kind of the, the chat or the feedback deal asking about taxes. So yeah, here we go. Now, first and foremost, obvious disclaimers. I am not a CPA, I am not a tax professional with all of your tax questions, you wanna make sure you go to a professional and you wanna make sure you go to a local professional. I know people are listening to this podcast in many different countries around the world and the rules and the, the loopholes are going to be different. So even state to state here in uh, the US, there are kind of some things you can do and can't do. So make sure you speak to a local tax professional or a local CPA about that. But the question came from Terry. He said, I would love a podcast on taxes, dealing with wash trades, sheltering gains, trader status, mark to market elections, et cetera, et cetera. And we're not going to dive into details into all of those subjects because, again, I'm really uneasy speaking about things that I am not 100 percent certain about and i want to make that fully honest and fully transparent with you guys i know that a lot of people listen to this podcast a lot of people take this as kind of like the word um and i just don't want to give you false information so if i don't consider myself kind of an expert or knowledgeable on something i tend not to talk about it but i do want to talk about kind of the the, the general issue of taxes because guess what Taxes are something you're going to have to deal with. If you make money, Uncle Sam or whoever your uncle is, wherever you live, will take money. It's also something that many traders don't consider, um, which can get them into a lot of trouble or meet them with a lot of surprises. I will tell you this, even in doing your back testing, we always talk about creating a strategy with edge and like if you're, you look at your profit factor, if your profit factor is one then or 1.1, then you're a profitable trader, well, you always have to take you always have to take into account the other fees, right? Fees are your broker fees and stuff like that, but it's also taxation. So your return on investment is gonna be a little bit different than uh, what you actually kind of see, right? Same thing with your paycheck, right? Your boss tells you, hey, this is your salary for the year, then you you add it up and it's a little bit less. I remember my first summer job where they, they told me that I was getting paid like, seven dollars an hour right and i was all excited and i'm doing the math like i work this many hours i'll make this much money i can buy this i can buy that and then the check comes in and i'm like it's like half of it and they're like yeah taxes take all that so you want to be aware of that so first the first thing to understand right uh, is that you can take advantage of taxes whether you are a profitable or non-profitable trader i think a lot of people assume that taxes are just for the profitable trader. They are for the losing trader as well. Trust me, I dealt with this firsthand because you can deduct your losses, right? So in general, if you're considered like kind of like an ordinary uh, trader, you can deduct up to $3,000 a year and the rest kind of rolls over. So if you have like a, a $12,000 loss, you can deduct 3,000 each year for four years. So even if you're someone that is struggling, if you're someone that is losing, this is important because you can actually save some money with this deduction. And then once you start making money, and most traders that go on to become successful, they, they tend to find success uh, 
you know, really in year two is when it starts happening. Now you can offset some of your capital gains with the previous year's capital losses. I won't tell you guys how long I did this for, but I spent a lot of time losing a lot of money. And I, I was excited because after my first year, I, I got scared. Oh, I'm going to have to report all this profit I made. Or after, after my first profit, I should say I got scared because I had to report all this profit that I was going to make. And then I remembered that, wait a minute. I spent years and years losing. I still got like three or four years of like $3,000 deductions to, to write off, which kind of softened the blow. So make sure you take advantage of that. Now, that $3,000 deduction can also be a little bit different depending on your trader status. And this was one of the questions that Terry asked. We're not really going to deal with wash sales. Um, I don't think that's really too relevant, but wash sales is, you know, we always say be very careful at the end of the month, the end of, especially the end of the year for weird things in the market. And that's because longer term investors are doing what they call wash sales, or we call kind of like straightening the books, where if you want to show a certain thing for the next year, you will typically sell something at the end of the year so that your balance sheet shows a you know whatever you want to show whether it's a loss or a gain um, and then you just rebuy it at the new year so you're back in a position so a good example of that not to get too deep into it is like let's say that I I'm an investor I have a firm whatever I doubt I made a lot of money I currently have this I'm currently holding this position in you know Radio Shack, or I guess I'm making something familiar, holding this position in Bank of America or something like that, that is in the red, right? But let's say the rest of my portfolio is doing really, really well. Well, all that money I'm making the rest of my portfolio, guess what, right? If I'm selling those, those are going to those, those show as gains. So what I can do is I can actually sell my Bank of America stock, right? That way it reports as a loss because I technically took a loss on that. It shows as a loss. I can do the deductions, whatever, against everything else. And then I'll just buy it on January 1st, wherever the new day is. So I'm back in that position. So it's basically kind of a way of moving money around to show what you want to show. And again, you see this a lot at the end of the year. Um, you see it a lot also at the end of months and quarters as well. If you guys have you know, any type of investment funds out there, they like they, they give you those quarterly reports, right? Sometimes they want to show you something in a certain way. So it'll kind of finagle the numbers to make it look like that. It's um, nothing that I think we need to worry about as traders, uh, more so for long-term investors or if you're someone that has a business, but that was part of the question, so I wanted to cover that. But speaking of traders, right? So going back to the the $3,000 a year that you can deduct, there is a way to deduct more, and that's going to depend on your status as a trader, right? So what if if you want to deduct more, right? So three thousand is the minimum. It's deducted off, you know, same thing as like regular capital gains, all that fun stuff. Um, if you want to deduct more, you would have to kind of apply. Applies not the word. You have to elect, I guess, um, to be called a mark to market trader, right? And that means that you are basically saying that, hey, I'm a high frequency trader, so I'm not holding stuff for like a year, there is a consistent flow of activity. You're taking a certain amount of trades a year. And basically that you're not like a trading hobbyist, like this is actually your your job. You are a day trader, you do this. And again, day trader doesn't mean lower time frames, but you're you're buying and holding stuff on a regular basis, or buying and selling stuff, excuse me, on a regular basis, not like just holding something for four years. And what's important to understand is that you have to do this before the year begins. So you can't be at the end of your trading year and be like, hey, I had a bunch of losses. I'm going to call myself a mark to market trader, whatever like that, right? It has to be done beforehand. So if I'm starting on January 1 or whatever like that, I have to tell them in advance, like, hey, I'm electing to be this. And that way they can see my full activity for the year. And I'm not just kind of finagling the books or anything like that. So the biggest thing about that is like basically all of your losses, if you have them, can be deducted, right? And that's helpful, especially if you have other sources of income. So if you have a trading business, if you're collecting commission, if you have another business or just another job, whatever like that, now you can take those losses and deduct them. Uh, speaking of deductions, right? If you are a trader, something else that you can deduct is everything that you use for your trading. So think about your equipment, right? In the, the last podcast episode, if I put these out in order, we spoke about 
one of the biggest rookie mistakes that are a, a big rookie mistake that many traders make is is getting too much stuff that they don't need, whether it's spending a million dollars on a, a charting platform or a, a new service or a, a high speed Internet connection, which I guess that would be a positive thing. But you get it. Spending stuff on trading. Well, if trading is your business, right, you are a an actual trader. All of that can be deducted as well. So you look at things like your commute, your computer, you look at your internet connection, you look at if you're using news or if you say you're using news, right? Your cable bill, your charting platform, your, um, I'm trying to think of anything else, any services that you may use. Let's say like you subscribe to a um, some type of trading service that is beneficial and, and then you deem it to be relevant and needed for your trading. All of that can be deducted as well because again, you are a business. Um, there's other fancy things you can do as well, depending if you want to call yourself just a sole proprietor, if you want to call yourself an LLC or a, um, you want to start like an S Corp. There are different ways you can kind of not get around taxes, but there are different tax loopholes for that. Um, but again, you want to talk to a certified professional accountant about that as well. But those are things that you want to keep in mind. So the biggest thing you can take away, and again, the kind of the, the biggest topic in this question was about the trader status and, and, and mark to market elections, which at least that's what I thought was the, the biggest thing is that in doing so, in, in making that decision, you are able to deduct more. Um, you're also turning things from kind of capital gains to kind of ordinary income as, as far as kind of like your, your taxation. So getting taxed at your ordinary income level, which could be better or worse depending on, on where you're at. Um, so that's a decision that you're gonna have to make. That's a decision that, in my opinion, you're gonna wanna have with your tax professional and just tell them your situation. Another thing, and I'm just spewing random ideas out here as well, is there's different taxations based on if you're trading stocks, based off if you're trading Forex, based off if you're trading both. Um, my accountant hated me when I first made the transition from stocks to Forex because they weren't necessarily taxed the same. And now she had to do all this weird stuff. And that's what that's what we pay her for. But she had to do all this weird stuff to make sure we were um, putting ourselves in the best possible position. So I hope that helps. Again, I'm not an expert and I don't really like talking about this subject because, uh, you know, I want to give you the, the best details available, but I also don't want to misspeak and give you false information. But I would highly encourage that you speak to a tax professional. I'm, I'm trying to remember, um, I spoke to two people in my my past. Um, one, I think it was, ah, it's either trading or traders accountants. I'm thinking of the website. I think it's tradersaccounting.com. Try that. Traders accounting. I'm pretty sure it should have like a, the theme should be green. If it's green and has like four squares or something like that, then that's right. Um, another one that I spoke to in the past or not spoke to, but I, I looked at in the past when I was kind of doing all this information is a uh, trader tax CPA. I believe it is.com. Try trader tax cpa.com and again those are just places where um i know traders account you can actually have them do your accounting they're tax specialists i used them for a while um before i use someone local um but i think trader tax cpa if i remember they have just consultation meetings if you have questions um they think they have courses and videos for information like that as well so those are going to be much better sources you can go to to kind of get full answers um whether it's on something i missed or whether it's a, a a personal question that you have about your personal situation so i hope you guys enjoyed the episode again thanks terry and the spotify community for leaving this question again the goal is to take what you guys ask and hopefully turn it into quality content and so far we've done a good job at doing that and also guys if you're interested in more of the actual trading aspect make sure you check out our website www.tier1trading.com we coach traders for a living we have a 14-day risk-free trial membership that means you can get on the platform take some courses join some live sessions interact with the community and make sure that our teaching style and teaching content is the best fit for you before making any type of commitment that's www.tier1trading.com hope to see you over there